And thanks for joining us this afternoon. First up, a potential debt restructuring where Ghana is likely to take the next six to nine months. That's according to Singapore-based finance and market research firm Red Intelligence. This may, however, take place after an economic program has been secured by the country from the International Monetary Fund. There is more in this report. The report projected that Ghana may run out of liquidity by the second half of next year without the assistance of the International Monetary Fund. Also, because the nation has lost market access, it explained that the finance ministry is expected to engage with external bondholders in the next few weeks on the country's debt restructuring. However, there are likely to be two committees taking shape in Ghana's Eurobonds. Red Intelligence also pointed out that at least four different advisory firms are working with the government on economic policy and debt management in the context of the sovereign stocks with the IMF. However, it says the firms are working with the government on an informal basis as the mandates have not yet been formalized. Uh, joining us on Zoom to discuss is Sarah Mkau, who is Senior Finance Lecturer at the University of Cape Coast uh, Business School. Uh, thanks for your time this afternoon. So, Red Intelligence gave an indication that four different advisory firms are working with government on uh, an econo economic policy and debt management in the context of the International Monetary Fund uh, talks. Now, again, given hint of a potential debt restructuring likely to take the next six to nine months after a deal is reached, uh, what, what do you make of this reporting? The situation that we find ourselves in right now and then the reports that we are getting from credible research institutions outside the country, to me, is a bit worrying. It's worrying because if the country, Ghana, is going for a bailout from the International Monetary Fund, and we can't find any firm in Ghana to partner government to advise in the debt restructuring or the bailout and debt management that we have with the government. And therefore, we have to go for four firms from outside the country to do this particular one is worried. During the COVID pandemic, we gathered scientists from Ghana we did not go for scientists from outside the country to advise government on the things that they are supposed to do. And their findings and the data that they have drive how government responded to the issues at stake. In Ghana, we have accounting firms, financial firms, other financial institutions that we have in the country. Why do we have to go for firms outside the country. We are looking down upon our people. That is very worrying. Secondly, the debt restructuring, yes, debt restructuring will come in when we are locked out of the international financial market. Once we are locked out from the international financial market, it's going to be very difficult getting the needed assistance. And we must make sure that we sustain our debt levels in order not to plunge the country into further debt. And hence, the need for IMF to do the debt sustainability analysis. The report of that we are here to get. But once the international firms, Fitch has said that, yes, there is likely that we would have a debt restructuring. We heard the president telling us that there will not be any haircut. The debt restructuring to me is not only about haircuts, but then there are other options that we are not looking at, where there will be a plea for extension of the period within which we can pay the debt. Some of the debts, for example, the 2015 euro bond that we went in for, that will mature in 2030. The interest rate on some of these debts are very high. Mm have 10.75 percent on the debt and that debt was guaranteed by imf that says that if ghana default in payment of this debt we are going to pay 400 million dollars on that particular amount and aside that ghana has not defaulted 
that debt we are paying it. The interest is outrageous, very high. There are law firms that advise on that particular one. And you realize that we are paying more than necessary as a country on some of these things. So who advised and who gave the authorization for us to go for an expensive debt we have as a country? That is not a way to go. And so if we, in our own country, we cannot use our own people, the finance professionals that we have, the economies that we have in our country, but we have to go and pick people from outside the country to do this advice for us, where are we going? And the question is, whether are we drifting as a country? Okay, uh, you raised the point about Fitch. I just want to update our audience a bit more. So rating agency Fitch says it sees more than 50% chance of Ghana defaulting on its debt repayment. According to the rating agency, the country's uh, sovereign credit rating may face another downgrade closer to default if talks with the International Monetary Fund for a $3 billion uh, package leads to debt restructuring. And you raised the point as to whether uh, President Kufado was correct in saying that the domestic debt will not face any haircut. My point is, uh, why, why would the president not be straightforward with this, seeing this report that we have from Fitch? Yeah, um, the president at a point in time is supposed to be diplomatic. So the president was diplomatic because the financial situation that we find in the market, the speculators are making speculations in order to profit from it, to keep the market afloat and not to disrupt the market. The president is saying there will not be any haircut. Now, already we have some investment banks in the country that have issued statements to their investors telling them that they should not withdraw their investment. If they, withdraw, if they withdraw their investment, it means that they are going to lose some interest and in some instances the principal on the investment. And there are some statements that have also come up saying that the valuation of the investment should be at the fair market value. So if they are using fair value to value the investment, it means that all investment will be valued at the current rate at which they are being sold in the market. If the investments such as bonds are sold in the market at the current rate, and the rates we know are lower now, it means that if you want to liquidate your investment or sell it out, you are going to incur a loss. Mm. That loss that you are incurring in itself is a haircut that you are getting. And so there are the other option that is available to government to explore is to ask for an extension in the period of payment where no interest can be paid on this debt. Government can also ask for debt relief from the IMF and World Bank in these instances. But these institutions, they are not for the Christmases, and they are not doing it for Ghana free of charge. Where the World Bank has guaranteed that government is going to pay um, the interest on the euro bond that was taken in 2015, uh. IMF, uh, World Bank charges Ghana interest on that particular guarantee, and we have to pay for it. So everything is cost. And right. we need our own people to have their homeworks done before they go to these institutions to get the rates that we want to get. If you are going for $1 billion uh, and the interest rate is about 10% on that $1 billion, that is a high interest rate. And you see a lot of people going to buy those bonds because they are going to be profitable. Right. And so the president was trying to be diplomatic in the issue of talking about haircuts, but that is already happening in the market if you decide to take your investment before the day of maturity. One more minute on this conversation. We expect the IMF team to meet with government officials uh, to continue with the talks next week. And the majority leader in parliament has given indication that the budget presentation may delay. So uh, what kind of budget works around this time? What do you advise? You see, whatever it is, we should not, as a country, depend solely on the IMF to come and rescue us. The deal with the IMF, we have been told, is going to take some time. Probably if the IMF is coming next week, and next week we are already getting to the time that we are supposed to read the budget. 
We had information about the data that is submitted to IMF and they have questionable issues with the data. So we need to prepare our own budget. Budget that will develop the local economy. Budget that will ensure that we have import substitution industries that will be able to produce and add value to the things that we are producing in our country. Food styles that we produce in our country must be boosted, supported by government. Of course, when we are talking about support, it's not free support, it's not free money that will be given to anyone. It's money that will be given, but the interest rates on this amount of money will be lower. We need budgets that will ensure that our agriculture sector is more productive in the things that we do. We have a firm that has been established in Ghana that is supposed to buy produce and keep them for okay. some time. And when the market is down, they release these things to the market. What happens to this particular company that we're talking about now? All right. Uh, we don't, we don't even I'm... hear about the company. The agri minister is telling us that they are going to buy produce and send to the ministry in Accra to be uh, sold to the market at lower prices. What kind of thinking are we having as a country? What kind of policy are we having as a country? The ministry does not belong to the minister alone. He, of course, is the minister of agriculture for Ghana and not his house. Sarah, we would have to leave it here. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your insights and perspective this afternoon. Uh, Sarah Mkawa there. He is a senior finance lecturer at the University of uh, Cape Coast Business School.